Manoa mai te Māori nuku, manoa mai te Māori rangi, ko te Māori kei au he Māori tipua, ka pakuru mai te pō, tau mai te Māori, haumi e hui e, tae ki e. Kia ora tātou. My first acknowledgements go out to Papa Tuanuku, our Earth Mother, and to Ranginui, our Sky Father, and all of the living systems that between them, of which we are a part. I also send acknowledgements to all of those who have passed on and the ancestors that you bring with you today. I want to send my aruha, my love, and acknowledgements to the mana whenua of this place, the Chochenyo speaking Ohlone peoples. Uh, ka whawhai tonu mātou, ka whawhai tonu tātou. Uh, to all indigenous peoples, nga iwi taketake o, o te ao katoa, nga mehi nui ki a koutou, uh, ka tū ka hikatea koutou, like the white pine whose roots under the soil connect so that it can stand against the storm, we're connected. Kia ora. <laughs> I want to send big appreciation to uh, Bioneers for creating this space for this incredible discussion. Uh, to Kenny, Nina, to uh, Alexis, Cara, Coco, Kelly, all the people behind the scenes that are making this happen for us today. Uh, it's massive, massive work. Um, and I've been listening to the discussions on and off and uh, absorbing as much as I can. And it reminds me of a corridor that we have that my, one of my papa, Chaz Doherty, taught us. It's, a, it's like a karakia, and it goes like this. Amohia e hika, tō kete ki te tuahu o te wānanga, ki reira horomia tō kai, ki a heke, heke rawa, tau atu, ki te kōpū nui, ki te nākauroa, ki a tiaho ki roto, ki a mārama ki waho, ka tīhei te mauriora, ki te whaiau, ki te ao mārama. And this kōrero is like a direction, it's, a, it's an encouragement, that as we listen to the learnings that are being shared with us, don't let them get stuck in your head and caught in debate between your mind and your tongue. Swallow them down deep into your puku, so that, into your, your, your belly, so that you can embody them, wrap yourself around them, and allow those learnings to come out through your hands as action. Kia ora tātou. <laughs> so whānau, these are my mountains. This is Maunga Pohatu and Putawaki. And before I can introduce myself, we must introduce my, my landscape. That's how we do it in, in Te Ao Māori, in the, the Māori world. So uh, on the left, there's uh, Maunga Pohatu. Um, that is the mountain of the Ngaituhue people, of my, my mother's father's people. Our river is Te Tauranga, and uh, our, my hapu is Te Whakatane, um, and my iwi is uh, Ngaituhue. On the right is Putawaki Mountain. Our river is the Rangitaiki, uh, my hapu is Te Pahipoto, and my iwi, my tribal nation, is Ngātiawa. So that's me there, those are my mountains, and my name is Erin Matariki Ka. Um, on my Pākehā side, I'm also Welsh, uh, Croatian, uh, English, and Irish. <laughs> so hey, hey, kia ora everyone. <laughs> um, yeah. And we call this process of linking to the land and connecting it back to ourselves, introducing it first, this is our pepeha. And it also talks about whakapapa. Whakapapa is our word for connection, our genealogy. And it can be short, understood as short for whakapapa tuanuku, which is to become or to connect with the earth. And so by acknowledging this, I acknowledge myself, all the ancestors that came before me, right back to the waters and the lands that we come from. Um, and that is a central tenet of our legal system. Understanding that relationship, we could call it kinship, or concentrism, uh, whakapapa is our word for it. Um, so I'm here today with my crew, River. Kia ora, River fam, yeah! <laughs> and uh, a lot of our work is about provincializing the, the Western cosmovision, bringing it back down to size and planting it back where it comes from in Europe, so that we create space for indigenous cosmovisions to create, take back dominance within the lands that they arise from. So that's a lot of what I'll be, I'll be sharing about today. Up on screen here is uh, Pamuana Jackson. Some of you may know him, he's done a lot of work here in Turtle Island. Um, and this is a wonderful quote uh, that he's, he's shared with us. Pamuana passed away uh, just over a year ago now. And you know what, uh, last, last week was his one year anniversary. It was the same day I heard about the indictment of Trump and the repudiation of the Doctrine of Discovery. So he's been busy. <laughs> yeah. 
And I'm here today standing on the shoulders of Pamwana and many of these other teachers from home. Some I will mention, some I don't have the time, um, but I want to acknowledge them. Uh, Pamwana, one of his challenges for us was constitutional transformation. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but as um, Matthew mentioned, it's about looking at the roots of our legal system and really going straight there. The law is like a plant, how it grows. We've got to stop pruning this legal system, the settler colonial legal system, and we have to go right back to the roots and understand law, like our worldviews, comes from the land. It's our... It talks to who we are as a people, what we believe is right and wrong, what we, how we connect with the earth, how we connect with each other. So constitutional is the nature of, of this corridor today, and it's something that I talked to, yeah, uh, pā moana. Ka pai. Whānau, um, I talk a lot about indigenous nations, and Pākehā, Pākehā is our word for settler, settlers in our, in our country. And um, for those that don't identify with either of those, I, I want to make sure that you still feel part of this conversation because we all live in a colonized reality. It affects all of us, right? And these colonial systems are so normal, they're so normal that they become invisible to us. And uh, so let's have a look at what colonization really was. And this is very simplified, but I find that if we just name three mechanisms of it, it makes it easier to to uh, decenter, right? So the first sort of mechanism of colonization was that moment in history when the monarchies of Europe gave themselves permission to go out and conquer the lands and conquer other people and steal bodies from one place and take them to another place, and we call this the doctrine of discovery. Um, that has been repudiated but not yet rescinded, and congratulations to all of those people working on that, on that mission to get it um, to where it is getting now. It's 500 years a bit late, <laughs> uh, but, you know, kia kahatato, that's massive. But we're all caught up in that history, it affects every single one of us. The second mechanism of colonization was the actual physical violence that was imposed upon our people, the disconnection of people from place so disconnected that we can no longer identify ourselves by our landscapes, for many of us, and then we end up identifying ourselves more by the color of our skin or by our facial features. We've been disconnected from our lands, our languages. It's, it's a, a history of epic violence, and no wonder the crises that we face today have come about. The third mechanism of colonization has been the strategic amnesia to forget these two things. And let's, let's note that none of these things have finished. You know, they're still ongoing. And that's where the work is, and we can see that. That amnesia it now needs to be counted. We need to remember this stuff. We need to remember it mentally, physically, spiritually. We need to understand where we've come from, and then we need to imagine greater things for our future. That's the battle we have in front of us, a battle of the imagination. Um, so to everyone here, we're sharing in this history. This movement is ours. It's intergenerational. It is intersectional. And it's our time here alive to contribute what we can in this moment to the altar of life before we disappear, bang, back to the spiritual realm, whatever that might be for you. So this is Aotearoa. <laughs> this is where we come from. The North Island there, well, no, North Island, South Island, thank you, James Cook. Um, the North Island is actually known as Te Ika o Maui, the great fish of Maui. So I come from, uh, we live on a fish, and you guys live on a turtle. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, now, Aotearoa, New Zealand, it was 1642 that Abel Tasman arrived. Uh, he never landed, he actually got into the middle. Uh, you can see at the top of the South Island there, um, a few of his men were taken. <laughs> and uh, he ran away without even landing on, uh, on shore. And um, he, that point now is called Cape Runaway, which I think is quite funny. Um, <laughs> but if you're ever wondering where Old Zealand is, it's where he came from back in the uh, in Netherlands. Um, after him, of course, was James Cook in 1769. I don't need to talk about him. He's had a lot of air time. Um, all I want to say is that Papa Chaz uh, always talks about the day where the Hawaiians got it right, so na mihi nui kia koutou e Yeah. 
And then 1814 was when the missionaries arrived. Now I'm just sharing this corridor with you to, to give you a sense of, of the colonization that occurred in Aotearoa, but not to center it, just to give you a sense of what's going on. Because in 1835 here on the left, this was our flag for the Declaration of Independence, He Whakaputana o Te Rangatiratanga, or Niu Tirini. This is when sovereign hapu Māori declared our independence, we had our flag, this is the start of our constitutional arrangement uh, with, with the wider world outside. To the right there is Te Tiriti o Waitangi, signed in 1840. Um, Te Tiriti o Waitangi is the agreement we realised, okay, there's more settlers coming now, we have this space, we're going to share it with you, how are we going to share that? Te Tiriti guaranteed our tinoranga tiratanga, our sovereignty, and granted a right of governance for those coming to govern themselves within our land. This is the shape, the constitutional shape, right? These two sovereign parties coming together and agreeing to share space together over time. But of course, as it rolls out, war, disease, uh, famine, and it became like this. The Māori world was taken over by the Pākehā world. That's what colonisation looks like in Aotearoa, despite our treaty. <laughs> That's one thing all our treaties have in common. They were all broken. <laughs> okay. Then, you know, in the 1850s and 60s, we took a lot of heart from the movements here, Native American movement, the Black Civil Rights Movement, and we started what's now referred to as the Māori Renaissance. And there are lots of our grandparents, you know, I'm the granddaughter of this movement. These are the things, these are the stories that I've grown up with. Um, the Nga Tamatua and all of the leaders at that time that, that fought. And uh, what they created was this treaty settlement process. And that is uh, really an, a response by the government to say, okay, we're going to hear some of these. Uh, conversations and we're going to go through a process now of, of a type of reconciliation. It's not perfect, don't get it me wrong, but it means that where we're at now, there's stronger voice, there's shifting in our legal system. Our, our tikanga Māori, our kawa is coming forward. So I come from a place called Te Uruwera and my iwi of Ngai Tūhoe, we're known as Children of the Mist. Te Uruwera is a huge rainforest here. Um, we describe, and as part of our treaty settlement with the Crown, uh, she came back to us. She was a native, uh, sorry, a national park, and now she owns herself as a legal person. It's massive. Legal person here. <laughs> Under the act in which she came home, we describe her as Te Uruwera, as ancient and enduring, a fortress of nature, alive with history. Her scenery is abundant with mystery, adventure, and remote beauty. Te Uruwera has an identity in and of herself, inspiring people to commit to her care. So this is the shape. This is where we're getting to now. Under the settler colonial law, the law is all about how we relate to earth and how we relate to each other, right? When you think of law, it's really common to think about like Judge Judy, you know, or like a whole lot of dusty books or, uh, you know, like um, a police car or a courtroom. You know, that's our conception of law. That's just a Western cosmovision. That's a Western conception of law. That's just one way. Law is about relationships. How do we relate to earth? How do we relate to each other? Under the settler colonial system, we relate to the earth as an owner to a property, as a manager to a resource. We can modify her, we objectify her into something that we can buy and sell like any other household item. She's just passive, and it's all about us. It's hierarchical, it's anthropocentric. Whereas under a Tuhua legal system and indigenous legal systems that I've found around the world, we relate to the earth as a child to a mother, as, as kin. We relate in reciprocity we relate with responsibility of care. It's not about our property rights and our rights to access and sell and carve up and our title. It's about our responsibility to the earth. The concept of ownership in our legal system is actually considered arrogant. To say that you could own the earth, to say that you could manage her. <laughs> no. 
how do you know? How do you know how the butterfly relates to the stream, relates to the top of the tree, and back to the fungi in the ground? You don't. It's beyond our human conception. So our assumption that we can manage all of that um, is purely arrogant and foolish. So we relate, yeah, as a child to a mother. Right. How do we relate to each other? On well, the Western concept, we're marginalised. Our groups are marginalised. We're individualised. Um, that's the frame the legal system supports that. Under indigenous legal systems, we are more collective. We have uh, belonging. And within our legal systems, we have belonging of each other, of course, of tūhoi to the land, and of our manuhiri, newcomers. Within our constitution, we have ways to create belonging for everybody. But we need to be able to live in accordance with the land. All right? And that's the difference. So we have created space within this legal personhood to be able to exercise and practice. So there's one reality that we have to acknowledge is that we're still in this space. We still have this hierarchy above us, this legal system. But now we've created space within that for Tuhui to remember ourselves, remember our ways of being and practice our laws and practice that so that we can heal ourselves, restore ourselves and the abundance. There are two sides to this movement that I want to share. There's decolonization, the fighting against colonial systems of oppression. That is tiring work, it is urgent work, it needs to happen, a lot of us are there. And when I look at our, our allies and accomplices, I encourage you, take that on. You know, my friend um, Nikapudu, he talks about, oh, I love hard work, uh, I could watch it all day. <laughs> Don't be like that, you know, get in there and do it. Action, belief. The other side of the movement is restoration, to restore our ways of being. And for uh, us indigenous people, that's where a lot of our effort ought to be going. We should be supported to be able to do a lot more healing, a lot more grounding into our, into our lands and remembering. Because that way, <laughs> that way we can restore ourselves and be able to create the abundance that we need to be able to get everybody else on our buzz, you know, connected. We need that time, we need time to be able to do that work. That is also urgent work. And wahinema, women in particular, I'm talking to you and talking to us because the timeline of the oppression of the earth is the same as the timeline of the oppression of women. We are the human representation of the earth. We represent her, and like my Tuakana Nahuya Murphy talks about, we're the portal between realms, the portal between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. And, and we are a very critical part of the legal system, representing those portals, representing those realms. So, wahine ma, kia kaha, tātou. Um, and then I'm looking as well at our artists, our healers, our gardeners, all of those people who know how to tap into that gut and express. If we're talking about self-determination, we need to be able to express ourselves. So expression, practicing that, Joyful expression, that is part of our work, it is work. So kia ora tato. I've run out of time. <laughs> um, I'll show one more slide. Together we will pioneer tomorrow's answers today as we reconnect and bind ourselves to all life around us. Our sense of duty and responsibility for Te Uruwira and Papatuanuku grows. Let us be responsible carers of the earth. We're not owners, we're here for a short time. We're here let us take our, our responsibility. Tēnā tātou, kia ora tātou.